<laughs> oh, all right. So um, what we're going to do, this is a one hour whip, uh, webinar on the YLP. And we'll have a few stories. I'll tell you a few stories to introduce the concept of the program. Uh, we'll have a, uh, an agenda and then a question and answer period or two, okay? At this point, I'm going to turn off my video and just uh, let you watch the um, slideshow, okay? Oh God, turn off my video. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> Actually, we see your screen, so. Oh really, you don't see me, you yeah. just see my screen. We also see you, at least I, I see Pablo and you and, uh, and Sophie. Sophie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's okay, it's just on, on the side of the window, so it's out. Okay, all right. Well, um, I may just uh, stop the video temporarily. Let's see what happens if I turn, stop the video on. Okay. Uh, I still see Pablo and Sophie. All right. <laughs> But I can, I can turn it off if you want, if you don't no, want to because, see me. <laughs> no, I, of course I want to see you. But then what's going to happen, we're going to see black spots for the others. You know what? This is the first time I'm doing a zoom in. Well, let's just go with it. All right. So once again, welcome. In this one hour YLP um, webinar, we're going to have a few stories to introduce the concept of the YLP program, review the agenda, and have a question and answer period, maybe twice. Oh, golly. <laughs> At the um, Milan District 59 conference, Pablo, Sophie, and I, we uh, introduced the YLP at a workshop. And we shared how our YLP experiences uh, began, held the workshop, and answered a few questions. And some of that material is going to be in, the, um, in today's webinar. It let me see. Each um, YLP has an agenda as a guide. And when the kids start the meetings, the excitement begins. What they will say, how they'll evaluate, maybe what's that mystery object for table topics. The students give two speeches during eight sessions, and they are evaluated for each speech. And as the meeting evolves, a door opens. It opens for the students, for the Toastmaster coaches, and for the coordinators. For example, who knew that shy Beatrice would burst forth with confidence about the relationship between her cat and her dog? Who knew that Matt would relate guitar playing to a doorway into life experiences? Who knew that Julian in his second year of the YLP would evaluate with such which structure and concrete observations. This is your experience as well as the teens under 18, or in fact, tweens, because you can have students between eight and 12. Each YLP is unique. There's a, always a story, and no two stories are the same. Each session experience is different. The agenda in the workbook is a guide. Each YLP experience is different. It depends on language, culture, age, location, purpose, motivation, and the number of participants. But like Matt in the doorway, he's 15. He learned to play the guitar much younger. And when he looks back now on his youth, <laughs> I had to chuckle at that. The guitar seems so tiny. He practiced and wanted more. So he and his friends would play music together. And they'd wander around with their instruments and trying to memorize songs with no particular structure. And Matt said that one day, one of his friends just sat down and started free, free, freely on the piano. I don't know what you call that, when you just play whatever you want to. 
And they all started to follow this basic idea. And when they appeared on stage after memorizing some songs in front of a live audience, they had structure. They had fun. They had an audience. And Matt said he walked through a new doorway. Are you ready to step through the YLP doorway with me? Let's get started. Yay. <laughs> This is an example of um, information and materials that uh, you can get you started on the YLP. The documents and YouTube links were made available in several emails to early registrants of the webinar. The information is available to you still on Google Drive. And how to contact me with questions, you'll see on a later slide. Any questions so far? No, 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 it's, uh, nope. it's all very clear. Is it? Okay. Well, I have a question. Besides Pablo and Sophie, um, who else has given a, um, a, web, a YLP? Marisa? No, not me, but I would like to do it. This Carol? Oh, good. Carol? Yeah, I would like it. <laughs> but <laughs> Carl, have you given a YLP? No, but I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, to do it and, and that's why I joined uh, this uh, web webinar. Okay, good. So um, hopefully I'm starting to get you a little more curious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then let's move on to the next slide. The YLP kit is available on Toastmasters and it costs about $17. Well, not about, it costs $17 plus shipping. And for the initial uh, kit, you get the coordinator's guide and five student workbooks, a pad of evaluation sheets, and certificates for the students. And you can buy additional supplies in the Toastmaster shop. And when you have a YLP, give a YLP, have a co-coordinator, and consider giving the um, co-coordinator, consider giving a the co-coordinator, a um, coordinator's guide. Uh, another question, we were asked at the um, workshop about the materials, and another question we were asked was, who pays for the materials? And that can be answered by either the club, who is sponsoring the YLP would pay, but from my personal experience, uh, when I took the YLP into the community, our partners, the non-Toastmaster associations involved, they paid for our kits, they supplied a free venue, photocopies, snacks, beverages for each meeting, and my club, club paid for nothing. We were the sponsor. So you always have a Toastmaster club as a sponsor. The YLP is a community program. And it's your chance to give back to your community using our Toastmaster tools and our skills. It puts a face on the Toastmaster learning program. So you learn while you're teaching and mentoring the students and you have their confidence. This is something very precious. You are let into their secret world. And it's probably a world that not even their parents often see or hear. So you, help, you develop and, and you help the students develop and learn their potential as, you know, they, as leaders. And we are in our fourth session right now and they are identifying themselves already as leaders and how this is going to help them. And that seed is planted early in the program. We're with a, that seed is planted with a little boost from the Toastmaster coaches because when they go to volunteer as officers, for example, like last night, it was time for elections. And they, they, the ones that had already been officers wanted to be off, officers again. And we had to say, mm, maybe we should give others a chance. And so a little pep talk from the coach and why this is important for them as an individual to, to be an officer helped. So now we have. Arlette, for example, as the new president for the next four sessions, and her co-president is uh, Caitlin. 
So now we have for the first time two girls as president instead of just one. And so the coaches also help them, coach them with taking the roles or speaking whenever possible. And anytime they have those opportunities to take the roles or speak, already after the first session, they can tell, they can feel it, that they're in a safe environment and they can speak up freely. Preparing our workshop, um, Pablo, Sophie and I, we came up with three main categories for giving a YLP. And under each category, as you see in this keyword slide, uh, we came up with specific topics we were faced with. So I'll just give you a moment to take a look at the list. Did all of you receive the email with the links and uh, to uh, documents? Yeah? Yes, uh, we did. Okay, all right. Now, how you set up your agenda, well, that's nice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I see. How you set up your agenda depends on how many students are participating and how much time you have. So in this uh, slide, I'm going to give you four examples of different agendas from Rome, Toulouse, and Paris. Those are the ones I have available to me. And the sessions run from one to two hours. And the more students, the more you can concentrate on speeches, evaluations, and upcoming, upcoming assignments. But the fewer the students, you not only do that, but you can plan mini workshops and other skill building activities, which you'll see in the, as each agenda progresses. In this first agenda, I believe Lucy had 25 students participating. She's in Rome and they use class time. So each time they had seven speakers and seven evaluators. She's a Toastmaster and a teacher. And then in the second example, we have Sophie's from Toulouse. And this is her session four. And they have six speakers and evaluators. And her group comes from various high schools and where was it you said they meet, Sophie? They meet at a, an international school. Cool, yeah, a yeah. private school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what they've had time for in this uh, fourth session are discussions in their second election cycle. So there's an election cycle, the first set meeting, and a new election on the fourth meeting, which prepares the group for the session five, six, seven, and eight. And after the fourth session, you'll notice, oops. You'll notice that um, in the manuals that the theme, there's a theme for each session, whether it's impromptu speaking, organizing a speech, voice and vocabulary, and gestures. The third session is uh, interesting because there are four speakers. This is from this year. And I put up the wrong session. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, for example, the one, uh, the agenda I wanted to show was the, uh, the fourth session. It was four speakers and four um, evaluators and the election. And this is a group of 11 students. But in the fourth session, two of the students didn't show up. So Julian, the current president, he decided to ask during the break the, evaluate, the four evaluators if they would participate in something different, like evaluating speakers that weren't there. No, how would I say this? There were two speakers and would, he ha would they help him evaluate the two speakers? So in this case, each of the two speakers had two verbal evaluations and not just one. So that worked out really well. 
And then we had our elections and elected the new officers for the next meeting. So in this fourth session, fourth example, we had nine students from last year. And this is our final session. So that means that we had three, three speeches, three evaluations each session. And in the eighth, we had to do makeup speeches for those that missed out on their second speech. But it also allowed us time for uh, contests and a party. And in this case, the group had voted in advance for two contests, table topics and tongue twisters. And the tongue twisters actually was part of a voice and vocabulary workshop and Katja asked if it could be included as a contest. So they're all, the kids are always thinking of innovative things to do. And they also wanted for the final session, debate. And they put together, we put someone in charge of the, the, the debate portion. And they decided that this debate would be using four famous historical characters in a balloon that was losing air. And who would be left in the balloon and who would be thrown out of the balloon? And of course, the historical characters to defend their case were Hitler, Marilyn Monroe, and Marilyn uh, Michael Jackson. So it was fun. And uh, actually, um, Hitler won. <laughs> but for the party, we had uh, awards and a potluck dinner, and everyone contributed food from pizza to pasta to salads and desserts. So another thing to, to consider is uh, when you give out the certificates, is to attach that red where leaders are made ribbon that uh, is available from Toastmasters. Uh, they attach that to each of one of their certificates to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So you, you have this opportunity to be creative with your agendas, creative with the students, let them take, have as much voice as possible in the decisions. The uh, agendas, they're just basic guides. And the students are running the meetings. You as the coordinators and the co-coordinators are the guides and set the basic structure. Everyone, the YL peers, the TM, Toastmasters, everyone writes a written speech evaluation. And after the fourth session, you can include a written form for everyone to evaluate the evaluators. That's in, available in the kit. You can make up a form for the secretary to make it easier to, to write out the minutes. And uh, let's see, you may have students that are interested in debate like happened with our eighth session. And uh, they want, may want to spend time at the meeting on that. You may want to receive feedback a few times. It's, it's helpful to know which direction you're going in. You can take it, do it at the beginning, middle, and end of the YLP. And their words, they become your testimonial. Bruno in Marseille, he did his YLP quite quickly because he was preparing his students for the baccalaureate in English. So at the end, he took about three of the students and made testimonial videos, and those are on Facebook. So there's various ways for involving the kids with photos or videos, which leads to the subject of the photo release form. Toastmasters has an official photo release form. And in the Google Drive, I've modified it a little bit, adding some extra information, more specific, because the parents are going to sign this, and it's important for the parents to know where these photos are going to be used. You may want to use them on Facebook. You might want to prepare a photo memory in Google Photos for, the, for them. You may want to yourself give a presentation or a workshop, or as in, in this case, a webinar. Speaking of the parents, um, contacts are very important because the students might not respond to email. And you wanna get the email addresses of the students and the parents 
immediately because the parents want to be involved. If you have questions or they have questions about what you're doing or comments or praise, they need to know who to get in touch with. And phone numbers. Get everyone's phone numbers. The cell number of the parents, the cell number of the students, because you can send SMSs. The kids will respond to SMSs, WhatsApp, a lot faster than an email. Uh, Skype, get everyone's Skype names, because if, when you do mentor to help them with their speeches, you might want to do it once or twice, uh, mentoring them. And it's really good to use the Skype uh, video when you do this. As far as for me, for contact for my email and my Skype, there it is for you. And I can give you my cell number if you have calls, you want to call me or send me an SMS or a WhatsApp, and I'll give it to you privately. I just don't want to put it on the slides. And so now at this point, I just wanted to, it's time to move into additional questions for whatever I've talked about or whatever you want to know about. Yeah, uh, regarding the, um, the parents, do you, do you give the parents something? I think, I think you've, said, you've said that you give the parents something to sign because you are um, uh, taking pictures or you will be, or maybe you are taking pictures uh, of the kids. So they have to sign this in advance. Like, as you said, no? knowing that you are going to or right. go to seminars or whatever. Yeah, so there's the, the photo release form. It's a Toastmasters official form and it's in the Google Drive, and it's also on their, on the Toastmasters uh, website. But the modified version for the YLP, I would suggest looking in the uh, Google Drive link. That you have. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And for parents, um, our, I don't know how it is, you'll have to tell me, Sophie, on yours, but for our YLP last year and this year, Parents are not invited to attend any sessions that, because that would take away an element of um, safety for the kids. And last year for the eighth session for the party, they voted twi and reconfirmed it a second time that they were not inviting the parents to the party. So it was only the Toastmaster coaches, the partners, uh, association partners, and the students themselves who attended the party. So they they will be a little radical on that, and but it's understandable. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Well, I have one more. <laughs> yeah? you, you also talk about coaching, no? Yes. You, okay, I didn't, that's a good idea. I don't know if it's in the, I haven't seen it in the, books maybe i have not read it <laughs> them uh, deeply but it's a good idea so uh, you offer like coaching to anyone who who like who like it and they they are they, they, yeah, they use it as I heard. that's yes because the, it wasn't mentioned in any of the manuals that i recall uh, we have a coordinator and a co-coordinator and our partners. But I had thought that I'm, I don't know everything and I need, I like help. I like working with teams and I had a, have a network in Paris. So I started asking others, you know, about their interest. And pretty soon we ended up with 14 coaches. Toastmasters. Oh, great. And it's a and, good idea. Yes. So what we would do is, what we do last year and this year is set up a, in Google Drive, an attendance form, who's doing the speeches, who's doing the evaluations. And we also have a set section for the coaches, who is attending and which meeting, which coach is going to be the general evaluator for the meeting. So we have one of the Toastmaster, each session be a general evaluator. We have the Toastmasters,
giving the mini workshop on every meeting a different topic. Even if we haven't hit the theme of evaluations yet, it's already, it was done in our fourth session. So this way here, they get evalu written evaluations from Toastmasters. Uh, the coaches, they become the mentors, the coaches for the students giving the speeches in advance. And that's why now uh, we've just signed up, all the students have signed up for their speaking slots and their evaluation slots for uh, session five, six, seven, and eight. And repeating what we did last year. And now the, they will get in touch, the coach will get in touch with the student because we have their coordinates and the student will get in touch with the Toastmaster coach and it'll go back and forth, back and forth, and there'll be one to three meetings probably. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Good idea. It is. Thanks. <laughs> and then you're not working alone either. You have all this other, the, all this other input. It's, it's, it makes it more fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else would uh, you like to hear included in the next webinar? I don't know uh, the participants who they'll be but what do you think is was, would be good to put in a in the webinar for the next time hey well i'll play it by ear <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see what happens we'll see what happens this went faster than i expected and that what i that i planned i'm just wondering what i left out in this session that could have been helpful so if you have any questions after we hang up, uh, please send it to me in an email or um, get Skype with me, and and then we'll uh, I'll try to answer your questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I I do I do have a question uh, if I may. Sure. Um, I I went through all the material because I wasn't able to uh, see the workshop in uh, Milan, and I was. Uh, I'm, I was impressed by by the presentation, and I was touched by uh, especially Pablo's uh, explanation about uh, helping uh, children in in more difficult situations. Um, my question is: um, I really would like to do something for teenagers, but I have no idea where to start. Should I just go to some schools in my neighborhood, or or uh, and do you do you need to be aware of certain issues? Like I went to college, uh, especially involved in uh, in difficult children, in in troublesome um, households, where there will be absolutely no mobile phone numbers from parents or whatever. So um, and he didn't really recommend it. He said, "Well, uh, leave those kids alone. I mean, this, this, uh, they will not be open for." for any kind of thing that way. So, so I wanted to know from you three, um, how did you proceed to start and, and uh, how did, did you get in touch with an, with an audience that was interested by this offer? Pablo, would you like uh, to answer that? Definitely. So in my case, it was kind of a, as I mentioned in the workshop, what you mentioned, is that they, I wanted to, to have it in my neighborhood because some of those kids don't have um, the ability. Sorry, can, can you, Moses, can you mute? I think it's, there's a lot of noise coming from that mic. Or maybe Colleen, you can mute him. Uh, Try that. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so I wanted to do it in the neighborhood uh, because they, um, as, as you mentioned, I want in those tr troubled kids to to have these abilities because normally uh, nowadays there are other kind of kids that uh, they have some debating and some showing at school, but maybe not them. In my case, I went directly to the school and I talked to the um, to the principal, and she suggested that I could go with this group of kids who were becoming who were studying to become. Um, let's say something like sales involved, mm -hmm. but in a very initial uh, step. 
and I, I, she, she told me in, in the beginning that it, it might be difficult with them, but I told her that it's perfect because I trust the, the initiative, I trust the program, and as Colleen mentioned before, uh, it's all about them. They will get involved and really from the beginning, so they will make it theirs. And sometimes, of course, it wasn't easy when they didn't want to, let's say, be ready for delivering speeds or something like that. But in the end, they all become uh, that group. Um, I think it is just a matter of, of knowing I mean, if they are in the school, although they might be forced, but they are still there. So for them, it might be probably more useful to, to have these kind of workshops or things or programs than rather than a math class or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I think if you have the will to, to do it, you will manage for sure. And people, and, and actually they were very grateful. Um, uh, to the program and they re really like like uh, colin mentioned before they really took that lead from the beginning like oh i want to be that leader oh i'm the leader now i want to be the president i want to be the to participate and next in the next co uh, class i will be the one delivering the, my speech and things like that yeah. so they are very grateful okay thank you did i answer yes <laughs> As I said, uh, um, in my case, the the group was already formed. Let's say, yeah. but in case uh, Clara, uh, Clara, sorry, Colleen, uh, your 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 picture shows Clara. <laughs> That's right. Because this is Clara's account. <laughs> <laughs> so, in in case of Colleen's and um, and Sophie, they they had different approaches to towards forming that group and having applicants and registrations. Yeah. And Pablo, in your case, I, su I suppose it was in Spanish. Yes. So um, the manuals. Do? And yep. the manuals are in Spanish available? No, not so far. But what we did is take advantage of it. And uh, I also talked to the English teacher mm -hmm. so that uh, he could use this in his class to have a content. So reinforce the content that we had in the YLP classes. And and also in their classes to translate this to Spanish. So they were uh, double, doubling the time with, uh, <laughs> with oh, okay. speaking in public and evaluations yeah. and stuff. Okay, that's smart, yeah. <laughs> that I'm glad he accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Language raises a, um, a, po a good point. Um, they are going to have the youth leadership available in eight languages. Okay. Yeah, it will be available in eight languages when it rolls out in our uh, region. And the, I don't, the, I guess the manuals will be available online. And do, do you know about the, uh, the awards for in the current program and the awards in Pathways? Uh, I guess you thought that it would be taken into account for uh, ACG, which I just happen to be, but uh, never mind that. <laughs> well, here's the good news then. Whether you're giving the uh, youth leadership program now or in the future, if you haven't used it for any award in Pathways, it will come up into a new status, a higher status than ACP. And you can use it towards your DTM because it will fall into the category of uh, sponsor, as same as Speechcraft and sponsoring a club mm -hmm. okay. requirement. So that'll be two good news, language and award. So if you, ha if you don't have any plans on reaching DTM, before the uh, final showdown of uh, the current program, or you want to just start working in pathways, you can. It looks optimistic for that point in time. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate your interest, and thank you for participating, and thank you for your questions, and thank you for no, your patience you. getting this started. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> so thank still, you for everything. Um, yeah, thanks for you. Thank you. All right, then pass on the word, start the program, grab your co-coordinators and your coaches. And Mark, Carl, what division are you in? I'm in, uh, in Belgium. So, uh, which one? Uh, which one in Belgium? There's only one division in Belgium. Uh, we're, we're B, I suppose. Well, B for Belgium, I'll check it out. Marisa, yeah. what uh, division are you in? I am with Pablo. <laughs> ah, okay, in H. Is that yeah, correct? In, in the same club, yeah. Oh, okay. Are, you are Division H, right, Pablo? Yes. Yeah. And Moses? Can you hear me all right? Yes. What, uh, what division I'm are in, you in? I'm in, I'm in District 74, which is in New Zealand. And I've taken some youth leadership programs down here in Hamilton, New Zealand. Ah, taken them or given them? Hence my interest. I've taken them. And so the, the organizations that I've taken them for are Girl Guides. They are the ones who have contacted me. So I've taken the youth leadership in there and have sort of like uh, helped them to grow in communication skills with Girl Guides. So just a thought that you know, other organizations that need our skills. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hello to New Zealand. <laughs> Whoa. Carol, what, uh, you're in Division A, F? Um, I'm in French uh, Riviera. Okay, Division F. Sabrina, what division are you in? Hi, Sabrina. Hi. Hi, Clara. How are you? Um, Colleen, the, the name's wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, no <laughs> uh, well, I joined you a bit later, but a bit late, but I'm from France. Okay. What club? Uh, Calia, uh, which is in Orléans. Ah, in Orléans. Okay, great, great, great. Not far then, from Paris. Okay, well, I'm going to make this um, webinar available online as soon as I um, clean it up, and then uh, okay. I'll, we can talk as talk here and uh, find out where you what you need to know, what you missed, and then for Pablo in Division H and Division F. I know you have people that are interested already in the program, so I want to find out more about that. Okay, well, time is just about up. And yes, the name is wrong. It's Colleen Shaughnessy Larson. <laughs> and this is our YLP t shirts. <laughs> Great. We had, we had t shirts made up for our workshop. And, uh, <laughs> in Milan. So we've had fun. We've had, we have fun doing this. We've had fun doing it and we're looking forward to having more fun and we know you will have fun as well. It'll be a really, really enriching experience. and You'll be addicted to it. Won't they Pablo and Sophie? <laughs> well, apparently Moses is too because he's busy still doing it. So it's good. Good news. Good news. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. And thank you. Glad to share information. I want to hear more from you too about what your experiences are. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a nice thank day. you, Colleen. Bye. 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 Bye.